Joining us now are George C. Uh, from Annandale Capital and Lindsay Bell from 248 Ventures. She is also a CNBC contributor. Good afternoon to you both. George, I'll start with you. NASDAQ finished the day up slightly, and it really was tech stocks that kind of buoyed this market and, and, and staunched the launches from being any worse. Your thoughts? Morgan, hi. It's, it's a very thin, it's a very, very uh, rarefied air market right now, but the big tech stocks are holding the market up and propping it up. It seems like just about everything else wants to go down, especially banks and energy. So I don't know how much longer they, they can keep propping it up because the market really feels heavy right now, but it hangs in there. And it's mainly because of all these wonderful big fang stocks and tech stocks that have had such a good year so far. Yeah, Lindsay, it really feels like the bulls and bears are locked here. We're in this very tight trading range, and we have been for some time for the S&P. What breaks us out from here, either higher or lower? Yeah, I know. It's, it's a great question. I think it's one that everyone wants to answer to, right? And the bulls and the bears, they both have their case, and both are strong cases, in my opinion. Of course, I lean a little more towards the bull case, but I can understand the bear case. And right now, I worry that in the near term, the breakout might be to the downside. Medium term to longer term, I'm certainly much more optimistic about where we go from here. But to me, it's all about the Fed and inflation. And of course, you've got the, the sideshow of the debt ceiling, too. So I think those are the things that we're going to have to watch. And what we saw over the last two days is that the market didn't really react to what were pretty decent inflation numbers. And so I think the VIX isn't moving. And so I think what we're going to have to see is really what does that mean for the Fed? I think investors are starting to get complacent. And, and I think that that Fed pause has really been priced in. But I do think that inflation still remains quite high versus the Fed's target rate of 2%. So I think that there's still going to um, there's going to have to be a meeting uh, of the minds here within the Fed because you still have a strong jobs, a, a strong, strong jobs uh, market. It, you still have inflation that is hot and you still have all these other worries that are out there, too. So I don't know that the Fed can completely take their pedal off the metal. Yeah. And of course, that's in focus, focus today, George. Right. Because you did have that PPI number headline cooler than expected core basically in line. But then claims we did see a big jump in initial jobless claims. I think something like the highest in in 18 months. There's something for everyone here in terms of the macro data. And it, it's continuing to stoke that debate about Hard landing versus soft landing. How do you see it? Yeah, I think the Fed is, is critical here. I would agree with those comments. And I, I think that the initial bank failures, you can really blame on complete malpractice by the bankers and in, in the ones that went down early. But I now think the Fed kind of owns that. I think the Fed is, is raised rates so much that they're starting to break things. And you're having some banks that really aren't that poorly managed. Some of them are, are well managed and they, they just got a mismatch on their asset liability sheet. And now you've got the commercial real estate issue coming up. And I think the Fed's going to have to be really reflective about what they do going forward. And I, I do think that they're going to have to start thinking about cuts. I'm not expecting cuts like the market is this year, but the Fed may have to change their tune on that if things start to really soften out. And they are getting some of the softer data that they've been trying to get for quite some time. But whether they engineer that soft landing, they keep saying they're going to pull off or not. We're going to, we've yet to see. Yeah. Lindsay, along those lines, I mean, we're showing the chart right there of PacWest today, down 22 percent. I mean, this is a stock that's had multiple trading halts on it over the past week or so. Uh, just this morning, disclosing something like almost 10 percent in deposit outflows in, uh, in a week. We've seen it cut the dividend. We've seen it confirm that it's looking at all strategic options, including the possibility of a sale. I mean, we've heard these types of developments from other companies before. Is the contagion contained? It's a great question, Morgan, and I, I do think that the, the, contagion, the contagion has been contained in an orderly fashion. What I would say is the hysteria around the regional banking crisis has at least been cooled. I'm not saying that we're out of the woods and there's not going to be another shoe to drop, but I do think that the, the Fed, the FDIC, and the Treasury Secretary have really made a point to take action around this and, and really try to calm markets to the best of their ability that they are. They are looking into this issue and they're trying, they are really trying to assuage, assuage things. Now, now the thing is, is, is that 
we have to, these banks, the regional banks in general, really are in a show me stage. We need to see that, th th that this industry is getting their de deposits under control, that they are returning to a sticky stage, if that, if that even exists anymore in this technolo technologically driven age that we live in. But also, we need a better understanding of, of what this commercial real estate issue is, who's going to be impacted, and by how much. So the problem is, it's really hard for buyers to come into these stocks, even at these really low levels. So that's something that that the regulators are looking into. And it's going to be something that really does continue to, to, uh, to uh, take up space in the media and headlines going forward, I think.